Hey everybody, I am overdue to change the nozzle on my Creality K1C 3D printer. So I wanted to share with you first how I know that it's time to change that nozzle, what some of the signs I'm seeing are, and then I'll also show you how to install a new nozzle on the printer. The signs and symptoms of when you might need to change your nozzle out will apply pretty broadly. So even if you don't have a K1C, stick around and you might learn something. So when should we change the nozzle? Well, I've let this nozzle go just a little too far uh, for the purposes of showing you what it looks like, but you can tell immediately by looking at this that there is problems. Uh, inconsistent extrusion and poor surface quality are really the things that tell you that your nozzle is needing to be replaced. Granted, it could also be a dirty nozzle, so try cleaning it first, especially if it's a nozzle that you maybe just put in. But the reality is if your nozzle is old and you're starting to see this kind of a thing, it's probably time to swap it out. You may also find you have dimensional inaccuracies, but you can really see that the extruder is just having a tough time putting down a consistent line anywhere. So another good indicator it's time to change your nozzle is just that the nozzle looks worn. And we've jumped ahead here to after I've got the nozzle out. But you can see that it's just pretty beat up. There's filament caked on the outside of it. Um, dense dings from hitting stuff, I guess, over time. And just for comparison's sake, there's one of the new nozzles that we're going to put in. So I tend to keep a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in there. Uh, I keep a few of them on hand. But as a rule of thumb, I find I need to replace the nozzle about every 30 to 40 printing days. Now it's time to swap out the nozzle. First thing I'll want to do is lower the bed. Now I need to retract the filament. Let's turn up the temperature to some place where we can push the filament out of the extruder. We're going to do a lot of this flipping back and forth on temperatures, unfortunately. And then once it's hot, I like to just go ahead and purge everything out of here. And we're going to let things cool off here before we start working on the actual extruder head. We'll remove screws from the faceplate. And we'll pull the faceplate off. There's going to be a little cord here that we need to disconnect. If you're encountering that cord for the first time, you may need to cut some glue off of there. And once you've verified that the hot end has in fact cooled down enough, you can take this little red slipper and just sort of gently wiggle it off of there to expose the nozzle that we're going to work on. Now you're going to want to set your temperature nice and high, 290 to 300 degrees. And the reason for this is you want that filament nice and liquid. If it uh, gets kind of clogged up in there and stuck, you can actually break your hot end in the process of doing this, and you definitely don't want that. So I like to wear gloves while I'm doing this because it can get uh, really hot really fast, or your tools can. I'm going to start by just sliding my wrench onto the hot end here, and I'm going to place my socket up over the hot end. And then I'm just going to twist. You do not want to put a lot of pressure here. If you torque it too much, you're going to break your hot end. Anyway, once it's loose, you should just be able to use that socket to screw it all the way out. You also may get a warning on your printer that the uh, hot end is not heating properly. That's just because the heat is dissipating uh, into your wrench and not staying in the hot end where it's supposed to be. And we're going to just apply a little bit of machine grease here. I got way too much on my finger, but okay. And with our nozzle already inserted into the wrench here, we're going to just slide it up into our hot end and screw it in. Again, we want to work pretty quickly so we can try and avoid that heating error from the K1C. If that does happen, just restart it. In fact, I think we got that error now. Be careful not to over-tighten your nozzle. 
one little quick crank at the end with uh, just a gentle push is all it really takes. And once that nozzle has cooled off sufficiently, just go ahead and follow the steps that we did earlier in reverse order. You'll slide that rubber uh, cover back on. You'll put the face plates back on. Remember to plug in that cord. And then you'll also uh, put the screws back in. Don't forget to run a calibration before you start printing again. So a quick side-by-side -side comparison. This is our old one we were looking at, um, kind of beat up. And then this over here, uh-oh, my uh, extruder head's getting in the way. But that's our new one that's laying down there. You can see it's just in a lot better shape. It looks like there's still a little bit of an extrusion issue going on. I might uh, open up that extruder and clean it. But yeah, we're doing better. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody out. Thanks for tuning in.